Hey guys, this is Lewis, and today we are going over the structure um, panel for Theme Nectar, uh, beginning our Theme Nectar Fundamentals class. So, um, yeah, so this is the first one, Page Builder Row, uh, going over the Page Builder first. We're going to be going over all the, t all the table of contents. Uh, the structure, spacing content, and background. And again, I would highly recommend using this page as a guide. I'm gonna use it as a guide. And I'm also gonna show you in real time, you know, what it is, how to use it. Um, and I'll try to give you live examples of each of these so that you can kind of see how I achieve them. Uh, and you can kind of see it uh, and under uh, get a good understanding of how all of this works. And because you definitely wanna understand all of these and all of these um, uh, different elements and um, parameters for salient. So the next first thing you want to do is uh, focus on let's focus on the row type. So the row type will control the sizing of your content and background layers. So let's go ahead and build a little container. Um, this is on my site. So I'm just going to add an image here. Okay, let's go ahead and click add image. Let's see, let's do that one. That one looks cool. Okay, I'm just gonna add an image. Click save. And if usually, if you if you have a uh, uh, if you have a a new page, you'll want to click this button, and you can start with a row, or you can click any of these elements, and it'll build a row for you. Uh, for for itself and when you start off with a new row it starts off with a container uh, uh, on the container row settings here so you see here it starts off with the container and that's where we're going to kind of start everything so let's go back to page builder so that is the first one it's in the container uh, the in container row type will constrain the background layer as well as the content this row type also adds a small bit of bottom margin by default. So if you're looking to make your rows flush against each other, use one of the other two types. That is very good. It, it's You really need to pay attention to that because sometimes you'll be like, why isn't this laying flush on, you know, my, uh, so let's, let's, let's check that out real quick. I think that's a good thing to check out. So you go here, boom, see, you see that little padding right there? Okay. So if we wanted to lay flush, let's check it out. Let's do one of the other types, which would be maybe full content, something like that. Boom, it's flush now. Isn't that awesome? And eventually what you'll really, you will need to understand, because um, I'm assuming that you're just starting out if you're watching this, so. Um, you need to. You definitely need to understand margin padding and everything. At least basic HTML and CSS. At least to understand things because that, you know, that would that would that would really help with everything that you're about to learn. Um, and then you need to understand how all these elements work together. So. So let's go ahead and move on to. Uh oh, and this is full with background. So that that just kind of I was just showing you that. If we want to lay things flush, this is full width background. Next is the full width content, which I showed you already. Full width background is good because this is this is an image, right? So if we go, let me just kind of explore full width background so you kind of so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm gonna align this center. That should align center, and then so. This is still container style. It has a container uh, width, which you have to, which is good to understand. Um, and then if you click into that, go into background and background image. Let's just do something like that. See? Okay. And then the. So the content of the background is full, but the content within this container in the row container itself is not. 
Whereas if we go into full width content, then it should span a much larger space. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It, it would only span the, it would make everything flat. So if this was, um, if, if I, so if I left align this, I'm sorry. It doesn't, it doesn't expand the content itself. It expands the placement of where the content can be. So left width goes all the way to, to the, goes all the way to left. And then the right goes all the way to the right. Sorry, that is a little confusing. But if you go here, it'll go all the way to the right. Whereas that if you have it on just container, uh, it's, you know, just on the container, it only stays in that container with the left and right. And, but if you do container, then it will also constrict the background too. See? But it keeps it in a certain site width. But if you use container, you should really be cognizant of that because um, of the extra padding here and uh, and the the deliberate site content width that it places. So if you have container, then you just need to be a, very aware symmetrically of how everything kind of works with it. Um, and I would recommend just sticking with one. If you're a beginner, stick with one. Um, and that way everything's just symmetrical and um, nice and neat and organized. Okay, so we got those down. Let's go down a little bit more. Column margin. Um, so the column margin allows you to define the amount of spacing between each of the columns in a row. And this is a very good explanation of what 20 pixels margin looks like around here, what 50 part pixels margin looks like around each other, and 80 pixels of margin, right? So, um, let's see, if we go here, so let's do full width content so we can see what it looks like uh, with a flush kind of content. And I'll, let's also add a little just for fun, background scroll. There we go. So you see, it kind of does this cool background thing. And then I'm going to add a little color overlay so it doesn't look god awful. So, just a quick tip you can do color overlays because let's say if you don't want to make it too, um, you don't want the site to be. Uh, this uh, you don't want the site to be slow so for different images a lot of times i'll uh you know i'll make it very low quality but you can fix that by kind of you know creating like a uh putting a gradient over it or an, a color overlay over over it and it'll be far less noticeable so you can use this still use uh the picture you want keep it very low um, resolution and it still looks freaking awesome and use color overlays and gradients with that so uh, just a quick tip just wanted you to know that that would be cool uh, then I'm gonna just align center that look nice that looks cool kinda has that space effect now um, okay so sorry column margin uh, there we go. Let's just look at these two columns right here. This is flush, so this will be uh, really interesting to, uh, it'll be very noticeable. So let's go into column margins. Let's put like 5% and you should see it go above here. Boom, right? So you just, but the only thing is that I honestly, I rarely use margins uh, unless I'm trying to do some kind of like interesting effect with like maybe the image or something uh, or move them. You just have to be careful with using margin, um, especially because a lot of Nectar elements already kind of have a lot of great automatic settings to it. So messing with those settings kind of can be a little annoying. Uh, but if you know what you're doing, then it's not a big deal. Uh, with this, I really wouldn't use padding. I'm, I'm sorry, I really wouldn't use margin, I would use padding. 
uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't do a margin because a lot of times it can also affect um, the uh, the mobile responsiveness as well. So I would just do like three percent padding instead. And you can achieve the same effect, and it's a little less destructive with content. Okay, let's talk about equal height rows. So this is a good, this is you know pretty clear explanation, which is good. But if you want to see it in action, here's a little bit of what it do. Okay, so this is good because you see the white, you really see the column expand here. Um, let's do another. Let's just do another, maybe just some. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we see that the columns are kind of different here. They and the reason you can tell is this is the end of that column, this is the end of that column, and this is the end of that column. Um, so what if we want them all to be equal height? You click on row or inner row. Click on equal height columns, and boom, you see. Now all the columns are equal height. But what if we're like, okay, well this image is here. I really want all of them to be centered here because that kind of looks weird, right? So let's go into row again. Then you go into default content alignment, click middle. Boom. Now we have this sweet looking equal height columned interesting set of rows uh, and columns here, which is really great. Okay, that's awesome. So uh, that kind of explains that. And then if we go into column direction, which is pretty simple, this first column, second column, third, and if we want to switch it, all we have to do. So if we really if we don't like the way this is laid out, we want to reverse the column here, go into row, column direction, row reverse. And it reverses everything. Freaking awesome. One click. And then you can also reverse for mobile as well by going to column. Say if you don't want, you like that on desktop, but you don't like it. Then you go on to you click this little handle here, click row reverse. And then this is also good. Select column reverse when column elements are stacking on top of each other. And we could check out how that looks mobile by going over here, clicking that. See how the columns reverse here versus when it's here. So let's set up here. Let's let's oh, not that. So let's go into mobile, row reverse. Boom. See, that's how it is there. But if we go to here, it's different. It's super useful, especially when you're building sites that need to be mobile friendly, which is everything now. And the final one is the full height row. Okay. So the full height row is something you would do with probably something like this. You know, you had a, like a cool picture or like a very good centerpiece. You want to keep it flush against the edges of the viewport, which is what you're looking through right now on the screen. So, what we do here is click full height row. And there it is. Okay, so if we click publish, and we view the page itself. And as you can see, it is the full viewport um, when it is displayed and it takes up the entire space of the viewport itself whenever it's in full view. So there you go. 
and that was everything explained and demonstrated for our first tutorial in the uh, salient essentials slash fundamentals course where we went over structure row type column margin equal height columns column direction full height bro and all that for salient for wordpress so let's do it please comment uh any questions you may have and subscribe to the channel uh, we'd love to have you and uh let's uh keep doing more of these we're going to do literally all of them so you can see how everything with salient work is uh, works and is in action so hope this helps thank you bye